Today I have a brief rundown of the five most important physics news of the year according to my personal and of course entirely objective opinion, starting with number five. Modified gravity was ruled out, or maybe it was instead confirmed. This is the story of the data analysis from wide binary systems. These are two stars which orbit around each other at fairly large distances. These wide binaries can be used to test the main competitor of dark matter, modified Newtonian dynamics, MONT for short, the most popular type of modified gravity. We can't just entirely kick out the law of gravity, of course, because we've measured it to high precision on Earth and in the solar system. But if Mont is right, then at some distance, the usual 1 over r square law of Newtonian gravity must cross over into a 1 over r law of modified gravity. And that crossover should happen in the range of these wide binaries where it'll affect the orbital velocity. So if you look at the orbital velocity of binaries of different width, you should see something. The confusing thing is though that different groups did different analyses of the same data and came to different results. One author said that Mond was confirmed, then another one said it was ruled out, and the first forgot to make some checks, but then the first one came back and made those checks, but it didn't change their results. So to my best knowledge, we still have two contradictory results, and that story will almost certainly continue into 2025. I'll keep you updated. <laughs> On place number four, I put Jonathan Oppenheim's theory of post-quantum gravity. He's been working on this for years, but at the beginning of this year, he made headlines with it, and deservedly, I think. Oppenheim's is the first genuinely new approach in a field that's been stagnant for 40 years or so. The problem he's trying to solve is how to combine quantum physics with gravity, which does not have quantum properties. Physicists usually say that this requires turning gravity into a quantum theory. But Oppenheim says that this isn't necessary. He says that gravity doesn't have to become a quantum theory, it's much simpler. To make the two compatible, gravity just needs to have some random element to it, a kind of unavoidable shaking of the the background space-time, because that'd make it compatible with the uncertainty of quantum physics. He's also made some proposals for how to test this, for example with precise measurements of masses. Let me be honest though, I don't believe that Oppenheim is correct. But I think that the mathematics his group has developed will become useful for other purposes, because it's a way to combine two different types of randomness. And also, you really shouldn't care what Sabina believes. On place number three, I have a story that was easy to miss in all the quantum computing news of the year. It's that Google's Quantum AI group has demonstrated for the first time that error correction actually scales as predicted. What this means is that we now have evidence that if one corrects errors in a quantum computer, then that requires adding more qubits, but these will not just increase the total error. If the quality of qubits is good enough and up to about 50 qubits, which is a long way to go to a million. Still, this is big because that error correction works is essential to building commercially relevant quantum computers. They later also reported that they'd used this error correction on a new chip with 105 qubits to perform a calculation much faster than any conventional computer could have done. Though, as with previous demonstrations, the result of this computation isn't of practical use, it's just a random distribution. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that'll help you remember what we talked about. My number two story of the year is DeepMind's progress with alpha proof and alpha geometry in revolutionizing mathematics. DeepMind's is to my knowledge the biggest push to combine the deep neural networks that current large language models are based on with symbolic reasoning like math software uses. The resulting combination is called neurosymbolic and it's like large language models but with enforced logic basically. 
Italy. In July, DeepMind reported that their maths AIs, Alpha Proof, together with Alpha Geometry, reached the level of a silver medalist in the International Mathematical Olympiad. That might not mean much to you, but according to the New York Times, Timothy Gowers, who has won a Fields medal, that's basically the Nobel Prize for maths, said he was definitely impressed. And people from DeepMind itself have described it as a massive breakthrough in mathematical reasoning and a phase transition in the ability of AI systems to do mathematics. Alpha Proof has been around for some years and it's made steady progress, so I'll admit that it's somewhat arbitrary to say it crossed the line to greatness in July 2024, but I think that this is an important development because once they've sorted out maths, they'll come for physics. And my number one physics story of the year is that evidence is slowly building that dark energy isn't constant, but getting weaker. Dark energy is the mysterious stuff that makes the universe expand. The simplest type of dark energy is a cosmological constant. It's usually denoted with a capital lambda, and as the name says, the cosmological constant is constant. Yet that seems to not fit with the data all that well. Instead, it seems that dark energy changes in time. This suspicion has built up for years now, first with the Hubble tension, that's a discrepancy between several different measurements of the Hubble rate, and with the sigma-8 tension, that's a similar discrepancy for the clumpiness of the universe. There could be multiple reasons for those tensions, but that dark energy is not constant has been one of the most most discussed ones. And this year, we've seen several new data analyses, most importantly from the Dark Energy Survey and from DESI. The Dark Energy Survey looked at how the light from supernovae differs with their distance to us. The DESI experiment looked at patterns in galaxies and galaxy clusters, the so-called baryon acoustic oscillations that are left over from sound waves in the plasma in the early universe. Both found tentative evidence that dark energy is getting weaker. Dark energy, the thing we don't understand, doing something we didn't expect. That's what cutting-edge physics looks like. But the evidence is not yet particularly strong. If you combine it, it's just below 4 sigma. But if it holds up, this will dramatically change our view of the future of our universe. It'd mean that the expansion of the universe might not eternally speed up, but instead speed up less or even slow down or reverse. We'll all still die, though. On that cheerful note, I have news of an entirely different kind. Begin Beginning in 2025, you'll see our science news in new colors, less pink, more purple, but otherwise, things will remain the same. I also want to use the occasion to thank all of you for being here and for being such a wonderful community. I really feel like I've made some friends here and it's like in the good old blogging days. So I'm looking forward to the next year and until then, I wish you happy holidays and as we say in German, guten Rutsch, a good slide into the new year. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash 
for Bina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.